In this video, I'll cover how you can make your own flower pots from mycelium. All right, here's how I prep cardboard for my micro materials projects. Uh, here's an example of a flower pot, uh, which is what we're going to be going over making today. So, first, start out with some shredded cardboard um, and pour boiling water over it. So, this is about three gallons of cardboard. Um, Maybe a gallon of boiled water. Make sure that your container can handle the water. It's going to be too wet, so we're going to pour off the extra water. But this way we can make sure that it's all pasteurized. Cardboard's not particularly nutritive, um, but we would just want to be extra sure because contam is no fun. So with your rubbing alcohol sprayed tools, stir it up, make sure all the cardboard is wetted. I still got some dry ones in there. It's all wetted. Drain it into a bucket. So drain off all the extra water. And then allow it to cool. Once your extra water is drained off of the cardboard, cover it with a towel and let it cool. It takes about an hour, hour and a half, two hours, somewhere in there. To prepare the flower pot molds, I got these uh, cheap flower pots on Amazon and uh, I just poke holes in it with a drill bit. This one's an eighth, doesn't really matter the size. You just go around. I did eight holes in the big ones, staggered around the outside, top and bottom, like that, all the way around. Um, and then the little ones. I did four holes, just right in the center. Um, and this is help, to help get some air exchange, colonizing, make sure I any dead spots. More holes might be necessary, less holes might be necessary. It's all about experimenting with mycology and these micro-materials projects. And so I'll put a link to these in the description. So this is a four inch pot and a six inch pot. You really do need the size difference here. Now it seems like this is going to be a small inside pot size, but the material definitely needs some thickness to be strong. Um, all my tests with anything much thinner than about three quarters of an inch have failed so far. So it may be possible, uh, but I'd recommend starting out with something with a significant size difference. Once you have your holes poked in your flower pots, spray them down with some isopropanol. Let them dry, make sure there's nothing inside. Cat hairs or dog hairs or anything. We want to make sure that it's clean, free of contaminants. All right, so now the cardboard sheds are cooled completely to the touch. And here we have a turkey tail sawdust spawn bag. So this is a quart of green spawn into a five pound sawdust block. This uh, has worked out the best for me so far. I've tried grain directly into cardboard. It doesn't seem to have enough contact area. I tried cardboard and grain, cardboard and sawdust together, adding grain. I mean, it's still colonized a little bit slow. The sawdust spawn seems to go much faster in the cardboard. So we'll start with this. So break up your sawdust spawn bag thoroughly. This will be not chunky. Once you've got your sawdust spawn all broken up, add it to your cardboard. And 
mix thoroughly to combine. So we want this to look like a homogeneous mixture. The sawdust and cardboard kind of mix them together pretty nicely. You kind of get this sawdust coated wet cardboard that really helps uh, keep things moist. I'm not going to put these in a humidity chamber. I'm just going to put a bag over them. It's like a kind of a mini monotube setup. I'm still testing out the best number of air holes for growth speed um, and dryness. Right now it seems like maybe one small hole is ideal. I added three or four one inch diameter holes in my last batch and they all dried out before they were fully colonized. So. This nice and mixed up. Sometimes you got to take a break, or you off all your hands, wear clean clothes, normal mycology stuff. You don't have to make your own sawdust spawn for this, you can buy it. A few companies sell it. This is Turkey Tail. Um, I've heard Rishi does well, haven't tested it. Oyster would probably do fine. Also haven't tested it for materials. Because I like this Turkey Tail. All right, now that we have our sawdust and cardboard together, Let's get some flower pots packed up. So wash your hands, at least propanol, wear gloves. Don't want to get contaminated. It's uh, no fun. So I'll put you know about an inch maybe down in the bottom. And We'll get our smaller flower pot lined up on the inside, but fairly centered. I'll have to keep recentering it as we go. Start packing material around all through the outside. If you find some nice white thick mycelium chunks, get those in there too. They'll grow excellently, continue to grow. We're just packing material all around this. Try to get your fingers down in and get nice even packing. We don't want any gaps on the outside. So it kind of defeats the purpose of a container. So this is a bit of an intensive process. I'm trying to think of better ways to do this, but haven't come with, up with anything in particular yet. If you have any ideas, I guess, drop them in the comments. Any kind of cool machinery for doing stuff like this. So we'll get that all loaded up. Just get nice even pressure. Keep making sure that it's centered. We're doing pretty good. Press the material down as we get toward the top. If you find any chunks of sawdust around, kind of lay some on the top to give it a cleaner look. Oh yeah, see here, I just found a big gap kind of developed as I finish this flower pot. You don't have to make your own sawdust bomb. 
you can buy it. Um, this can just be a fun project. All you would need is shaded cardboard. You buy all the spawn and molds. You don't need to know too much about mycology. Be totally honest. Could be fun in a classroom. Or as a project with your kids. I don't know what I saw this spawn bag runs, but 20 bucks depends on where you buy it. Yeah, so just take some soda spawn and tap it in along the top. Should help give it a cleaner look at the end. Some of my old models, the cardboard dries out at the top. And then it gets kind of this rough look. So, pack a little sawdust down on the top. There we have our filled flower pot. So, we'll bag this up and let it colonize. All right, so we have our finished flower pot. I'm just gonna throw it in that waste basket liner. Punch it up at the top. Just to help hold the moisture in. You want it to colonize and not dry out. If you live somewhere humid, uh, this might be unnecessary. There you go. That is our flower pot ready to colonize. Ziplocs work great. You don't want to use a waste basket liner. Every usable. I put two big holes in all mine though, so whoops. Alright, six days after the flower pots were made. They're now looking very colonized. You can even see it's kind of grown up into the bottom flower pot there. So pop it out of the mold and then let it finish for a few days. Make sure it's nice and white all over. So, I'm going to squeeze the outside, push on the bottom, get it nice and loose. I like to pop the center out first, so just kind of pull at the edge. Once you can get it free from the mycelium, it usually comes out pretty quick. There we go. So that's looking pretty nice in the center. We didn't pull out much material. This one's clearly off-centered. It's a little fatter on this side than this side. I'll be okay for this cute project. And then if you loosen the bottom up enough, you can kind of just pop it out. Okay. This one's looking nice. It's pretty well colonized, especially on the bottom. So you probably don't have enough air holes on this side. So you still have some patches here that look undensified, but it's still very moist, colonizing well. Put it back in the bag. Let it keep going for another couple days. If your materials seem dry at this point, you could spray the inside of the bag with some clean water before you put the flower pot back in and that should help rehydrate it and keep it growing for the rest of the time. So we'll come back in a few days and get these ready to bake. Alright, so the flower pots are done colonizing and these turned out great. Very white, nice mycelium coverage. You can still see some cardboard, which I think is a nice touch. The tops are pretty smooth, so I'm very happy these turned out. So today we're gonna dry them out and bake it to kill the mycelium. I know, sad, but it'll harden them up and keep them from rotting. Um, or fruiting, which will make them very weak. So, I have my oven at 185 Fahrenheit. As long as you're below boiling, 210 Fahrenheit, 100 C, you should be good. Um, 185 seems to work well uh, to dry these out without causing any burning. So I'll put these in the oven for you know, somewhere between four and six hours. 
You just want them to be very dry. You don't want them to feel damp or squishy at all. By the end, they'll be very hard. So let's get these in the oven. I'm also gonna add a bonus project. Some bricks of the same uh, creation. So put those in there and come back in a few hours. So the flower pots spent about four hours in the oven. I turned it up a little bit to about 200 Fahrenheit and they're still a little squishy. That's okay, the mycelium is dead at this point. So I'm gonna move them in front of a fan and they'll fully dry out over the next about 24 hours. All right, the flower pots baked in the oven and then dried on the shelf for a few days. They were dry after about two days in front of a box fan. I left them for about a week to make sure they're totally hard. I'm squeezing that pretty dang hard. Feels strong, pretty excellent. They're light, I don't know, maybe 100 grams. So they're ready to go now. You can fill them up with dirt, put a plant in them. They do pretty well to avoid water. I'm gonna use a trusty Kirkland sparkling water and uh, you can see it's just pooled down in there. It's not soaking in. The mycelium becomes hydrophobic, hating water after it's baked, which is pretty astonishing to me anyway. So it's good for plants. I wouldn't soak the plants. If you are, just poke some holes out the bottom and it'll have drain ports and you're good to go. So I'm gonna prepare some of these flower pots and make something cute. And here we have our finished project flower pots. They're very nicely hardened, super dry. At this point, the mycelium has become hydrophobic when dead. So water won't absorb into the cardboard. It won't rot. When you're ready to be done using it, just chop it up with a shovel in your compost pit. It'll compost just like regular cardboard, probably faster. I've seen some reports that it could take as little as 45 days. But a very eco-friendly solution to you know, a disposable flower pot. So I'm gonna keep experimenting with this. If you experiment with it, please share your results. I'd love to see it. Drop a comment at me. And looking forward to learning more about mushrooms and mycelium. As always, thanks for watching. Bye.